Great Britain and the EU. Oh yes, the separation has now lasted three years. A time when getting used to it has set in, but the problems remain and new ones keep appearing. And there will be new challenges for the economy in 2024. And so three years after the final Brexit, the consequences of Britain's exit from the EU continue to cause concern for the economy on both sides of the, of the English Channel. Among the main victims of Brexit are smaller companies who have often given up. That was said by the German ambassador to London, Miguel Berger. It's a bit of a cost for the big companies, but they've gotten used to dealing with it, he said. Bilateral trade is estimated to have fallen by 10 to 15 percent since Brexit. And Great Britain has now slipped out of the top 10 of Germany's most important foreign trade partners. Great Britain left the EU at the end of January 2020. And since January 1st in 2021, the country is no longer a member of the EU customs union or the internal market. And this led to considerable delays in trading, especially at the beginning. The head of the German-British Chamber of Commerce and Industry in London, that's Ulrich Hoppe, said that the economy has now largely adapted to the new conditions. Trade is growing again, and this gives hope for the future that parts of the Brexit dent can be compensated for in the medium term. Sectors such as renewable energies in particular have potential, said Hoppe. German technical expertise can help unlock the great potential of renewable energy in the UK, he says. But EU food exporters could face new problems. After several postponements, Great Britain now wants to introduce import controls for animal and plant products. Of course, they pose challenges for this sector, but for the entire breadth of the German-British economy, the effects of the new regulations are rather small, said Hoppe. And Jörg Alexander von Massenbach from the British Chamber of Commerce in Germany said the expected risk assessment of the goods would lead to additional organizational effort and delays. The warnings on the British side are greater. For many British companies, EU regulations such as the CO2 tax make it easier to trade with countries further away than with the EU. That's at least what the head of the British Chamber of Commerce, uh, Siobhan Haviland, recently told the Financial Times. In particular, sectors such as agriculture and chemicals, which had already been hit by new Brexit tariffs, are now confronted with reporting obligations on supply chains, also CO2 emissions and the use of plastic packaging. Haviland called for the British government to adapt its rules to those of the EU. The German economy has been particularly thorny about the residency regulations since Brexit, which make it more difficult to send skilled workers at short notice and make permanent relocation more expensive. The conservative British government recently announced that it would significantly increase the required annual income for foreign workers in order to limit net immigration. Especially for younger people who are looking to start a career here, these hurdles will be difficult to overcome, said Ambassador Berger. But schools or cultural institutions would also not be able to pay the higher salaries. As a result, Great Britain has lost a lot of its attractiveness, said the expert von Massenbach. Academic exchange has suffered major losses. Companies based in Great Britain are also increasingly running out of arguments for dealing with complex, constantly changing visa options in order to offer internships or traineeships for a limited period of time. The consequences of a further change cannot yet be foreseen. And with the new year, the primacy of initially adopted EU law in Great Britain will end in areas such as trade, competition, employment and consumer protection. Massenbach expects growing legal uncertainty. Affected companies must remain vigilant in order to be able to react quickly to changes. There will probably be an associated increase in bureaucratic and cost-related costs, at least in some areas, said the partner at the business law firm GSK Stockmann in London. For the British food industry, there is going to be an increasingly cold winter coming in the new year. Not just the seasonal bad weather, but a whole series of problems 
that are all designed to make life more difficult and expensive for the industry. For a start, the UK is finally due to introduce a checks at the borders for imports of food and agricultural products from the EU, as I said earlier. And this has been delayed for years because the government was far too inefficient to introduce them and then realized how expensive and time consuming they would be and then realized that those costs would be passed on to consumers in the form of higher inflation. But the big worry is that the whole process will be so messy and complicated that thousands of small suppliers from the EU will just stop bothering to export to the UK. And this is after all what happened when the EU introduced the checks on on their exports in 2021. Small UK exporters gave up and, and just stopped exporting. And this is not just a case of a few specialist suppliers of Spanish smoked sausage deciding to sell elsewhere. Just look at Ireland. Its agricultural sector has been a huge supplier to the UK for hundreds of years. Milk, butter, cheese, bread, beef, pork, beer, cider, whiskey, just say it, and and the Irish provide it. And these exports are worth 5.5 billion euros in a year to Ireland. And they are just about to make those exports more difficult and expensive and time-consuming and wasteful. One wrong form, one missed test, one unregistered vehicle and whole lorry loads of food will be rejected. To be fair, the industry has had years to prepare for this, but Brexit has had another unexpected blow in store for the food industry. And that is the Windsor framework. It was the deal negotiated by Rishi Sunak to try what they thought to fix some of the many problems left by Boris Johnson's complete incompetence in negotiating a Brexit deal, the one that placed a border down the Irish Sea. One of the solutions was to label all food made in the UK which was destined for Northern Ireland with labels that say clearly not for EU, to stop it being slipped across the border into the Republic and therefore the EU. The problem is that all UK produced food will have to bear the label from October next year. And businesses say this is totally unnecessary, but the government seems to have stopped listening to business at all. Which means food for export to the EU will have to be labeled differently. And that's a fiddly and costly bother. While food exported to the rest of the world will be able to carry the not for EU label, it hardly increases confidence in the UK's food exports around the world. And many customers will doubtlessly ask, what is wrong with this food if it can't be sold in the EU? The latest trade snapshot from the Food and Drink Federation found that British exports were down by 5.5% year on year. The FDF reports this trend could be compounded by the UK's government proposal to make it mandatory to have not for EU labels for products sold on the GB market and the damaging impact this will have on exports to the EU. SMEs will represent 97% of the UK's food and drink manufacturers, which will be the hardest hit on labeling costs. Another complete mess, another own goal and another Brexit bonanza for their competitors and rivals. So, Happy New Year to the UK's food and drink industry, British largest manufacturing industry, hobbled by its own government once again. And if you want to see something else right now, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.